fascinating, interesting debate show is live yeah. in the huddle. Yeah, man. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from around the world. Welcome back to another episode of In the Huddle EP246. And it's time for the new bag of tricks that we got up our sleeve. Best believe we will achieve. And on this new episode of In the Huddle, as we're moving down the line here, your boy is on vacation. Nevertheless, your boy is enjoying his time. I'm eating good. I'm living good. I'm feeling good, you know. And I got to watch the fight last night, you know, with my pops and my grandmother. We watched the fight together, Bevo and Canelo. And, man, listen, I know I'm in an area on vacation where, you know, I'm probably going to be on the light side of things. But then again, this topic is going to have me going all sorts of ways. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it's time for the cue. It's your boy, the one and only, the real Lil, on vacation, but with a mic in front of my damn face. And I'm ready to give it to you raw. And that's exactly what I'm going to do with the star co-host that I got with me. On the mic, Zay. Zay, what's going on, my guy? How you feeling? Hey, man, I'm always in paradise, especially after seeing what I had to witness last night. <laughs> was absolutely ridiculous. The fight, not only uh, boxing, UFC was ridiculous as well. It was a crazy Saturday night, and I can't wait to talk about it. I'm ready to break it down whenever you are. Yeah, man, I'm ready to break it down like the walls of Jericho, to be honest with you, as Canelo Alvarez suffered a uh, unanimous decision defeat of Dimitri Bivol, who went in there and upset a Canelo Alvarez. Now, of course, I want to give fight reactions to the fight, a little quick instant fight reactions. And then after we give our takes, I do want to get into some controversy that always comes with a Canelo judge fight. And I got a lot to say about that. But I'm going to save that for later. Save the best for last, as they say. I'm going to throw it right over to you to give me and the listeners your instant fight reactions. Seeing Dimitri Bivol do, arguably, the unthinkable. So, um, you know, is it one of those usual Canelo fights where he starts off extremely slow? That's been one of the most, crit uh, one of his most critiques of um, the fight in most of his fights. Everyone critiques about how slow he starts off his fights and picks it up as the fight goes on. I think he was banking on his opponent to be gassed um, later in the rounds so that he's able to pick him apart and do what he likes to do, which is body, head, body, head, body, head, and continue that in, the, in that fashion to the sense where he's breaking down his opponent's body. Um, in this sense, it seems very different because a bivol, or I like to call him unbelievable, was picking apart Canelo the entire fight. And it started off the first five rounds. We saw Bivol, um Pushing the fight, pushing the tempo, being in Canelo's face the majority of the fight, which we're not um, accustomed to seeing. We're not accustomed to seeing Canelo on the ropes for the majority of the fight. And um, we usually see him push the tempo when he feels like his opponent is doing a little too much. It didn't, uh, it wasn't able to phase Dimitri. And I think we saw that early in the rounds, even though the announcers try to sway the, wa um, the watchers and the listeners, those are everyone that was watching the fight. They try to sway the um, the crowd saying, yeah, you know, Canelo won the first five rounds. He hasn't lost a round yet. And then turn, they did a full 360 at round seven saying he hasn't landed double digit punches at all the entire fight. And then Dimitri landed double digit punches every round that they were in. So it was strange how we watching a fight that we see Dimitri is a different beast because he was able to endure all of the punches that Canelo was throwing at him. It was um, swinging at him for jabs, hooks, body shots and all. And Dimitri was unfazed with his high guard. He, was, he had that high guard the entire fight. He didn't drop his arms when he was too tired. He kind of kept pushing even when his arms were bruised up. Even when he looked like he was taking a lot of punishment. He wasn't phased by the power. He even said in the post fight, he was like, well, um, you know, he hit my arms a lot. My arms are a little sore, but I knew that going into the camp. I knew what kind of punishment Canelo dishes out, and we were prepared to do so. We were prepared for that situation to happen. We just had to keep sticking to the game plan. Jab, hook, and body. So it was something that when I was, as I'm watching a fight, I, I saw that Dimitri was a different beast. He wasn't afraid of Canelo. He wasn't in um, blinded by the stardom of Canelo. He was just like, I'm. This is another fight for me. I'm, I'm gonna take him apart with one one round after the other, and he, that's exactly what he did. Um, it's interesting how the two opponents that uh, Canelo loses to are the two opponents who wasn't afraid of him. They they kept pushing the tempo. They kept pushing him um, to the brink where he had to really think and he had to really try to find a way to get out of the hole he was in i think in this particular fight he was in a deep hole that couldn't he couldn't climb out of 
And um, I think if he would have started off fast, like uh, as um, trying to get his combos in earlier in their fight, he probably would have won. But he waited too long to try to get take off. And I think that was his biggest downfall of last night. Yeah, I mean, where can I begin? When you talk about all the theatrics of this fight, I mean, from the beginning, from the judges, from the commentators, for the fight itself, I guess I'll start with the fight itself. I think before we even get to the fight itself, excuse me for drawing back a little bit, I'll say this. Canelo Alvarez made the ultimate mistake by opting not to protect his own turf at 168 and 175, but trying to conquer Beaville's turf. Like, you're trying to conquer my turf. Worry mm -hmm. about yours. Stay in your lane, bro. You know, I think the middleweight division is the biggest winner here. When you talk about guys like Benavidez, when you talk about guys like Charlo, when you talk about guys like possibly Demetrius Andre, you know, those guys right there that seen Canelo, a guy in their division, a guy who they want a shot at, whether it be for the paycheck, whether it be for the respect, whether it be for the intellect, whatever it is, they want a shot at Canelo. And they see Canelo said, excuse me, I'm going to bypass you because I'm bigger than the sport. I'm bigger than this division. I'm bigger than y'all. I'm going to go up and try to conquer somebody else's turf and get his belt and do what I please when I so please. Nah, life, as always, has to humble you. And that's what it did to Canelo Alvarez. All right, he picked more than he can chew. What it do? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, no disrespect. I'm not a lightweight division guy, nor am I a cruiserweight guy. I'm a heavyweight guy. I'm a middleweight guy. I'm a welterweight guy. I'm a lightweight guy. So there's not a lot of tape, or should I say a lot of fights where I actually watch live from Bevo. Mm -hmm. So we underestimated Bevo. That's just what it is. And I think Canelo did too, because I did think Canelo thought it was going to be an easier fight than fighting that black style of, mm -hmm. you know, combat. And he got his reality check. Like, bro, you can't just go around conquer conquering other people's divisions. These guys got pride just like you do. And Bevo showed that pride on full display. I mean, listen, the guy was focused on his target. Their whole entire fight moved in there like a robot. Okay, I robot. Yes, it was Bevo robot. He was in there. You know, he came in with a great game plan, utilizing the movement, the footwork, the jab, and just staying in front of Canelo. Never allowed Canelo to walk him down, but controlling the center of the ring. There was a couple times where I thought Bevo was getting backed up. He was like, nope, I'm getting up out of there. I'm controlling this fight from the distance. And Zay, you was on the money when you said in your predictions that this fight was going to be fought in the middle of the ring the entire fight for 12 rounds. Surely happened like that. That's exactly what went down. And, you know, the jab, you know, he used the jab to control the distance and throw combinations to keep Canelo off him. You know, and um, overall, it was a good fight. I was very impressed by Bevo. He showed a boxing masterclass. Never saw him rattled. I saw Canelo frustrated a couple times. Bevo was cool as a cucumber. And, um, you know, he just went in there with a game plan knowing that he could beat Canelo. Listen, I'm about to take a sip of this water because I got a hot take, okay? And mm -hmm. I got a take that, honestly, it's really not so hot if you watch the film and not sucker for, you know, people like Canelo Alvarez. But to be honest with you, Canelo was overrated, bro. He's overrated. He's an overrated fighter. And no disrespect to him. I always tell people when you hear those words overrated come out of my mouth, it doesn't mean I'm saying a fighter can't fight or he's whack or he's garbage. What I mean by overrated is based on how people perceive you to be mm -hmm. and if you really are that type of guy. Like, for example, I know we go back and forth with Mike Tomlin. Never have mm -hmm. I said Mike Tomlin is not a good coach in the NFL. But people hold him in his high regards like he's the top coach in the NFL. He's not the top coach in the NFL, which means he's overrated. Canelo Alvarez is not unbeatable. It was shown last night, which means he's overrated. When you look at fights like Sergey Kovalev, Danny Jacobs, Billy Joe Saunders, Plant, all these fighters that I just named had at least some success, at least 55% of success during their fights with Canelo. At least 55% of the fight, they had some success. But the difference was... They allowed Canelo to walk them down with the body shots that added up, and they couldn't give Canelo that respect in return. Bevo showed that. Like, he got Canelo's respect with the frustration and, and, and lifting him up later on in the rounds. Mm -hmm. Gennady Golovkin got Canelo's respect. Those two guys got Canelo's respect, and that was the difference. So when I watch all Canelo fights and all the guys that I just named, I thought Danny Jacobs was a draw. 
I thought mm -hmm. Triple G won the first fight. Um, I thought Canelo won the second fight, but some people said it was 0-2, 1-1. Some people say 2-0 the other way. Um, even but my guy over there, um, Billy Joe Saunders, was winning the fight, I thought, until he got caught. Um, Caleb Plant, I thought, was doing a really good job before he got caught. Canelo mm -hmm. is not unbeatable, which makes him overrated, in my honest opinion. All you have to do is control the distance, not get backed up on the ropes, jab, move, bop, and weave, and do exactly what Bevo did last night, to put it into context. Yeah, but you, I, I think one key fact you, you left out was that people are so starstruck with his allure and what, what he's been doing in boxing that they get caught up in what he's trying to do opposed to fighting their own game, as you mm -hmm. stated. All you have to do is cut off the ring from him, apply pressure, uh, utilize the distance, the jab. And because and, Canelo's, Canelo's not the tallest, you know, lengthiest fighter out there. He just knows how to get to his spots because people, the boxers he's fighting against, are already done before the fight even starts. They, they, they lost the mental game of the fight because they fear they are they are in fear of Canelo just entering the ring. They're not really looking at it, at it as I could pick him apart if I do this or that. They establish their game plan for like maybe the first two three rounds, and then after that they forget all about it because all they're thinking about is oh damn Canelo's gonna heat up soon. I have to do this or I have to do that. They're not focused on the game plan at hand, and I think that's the biggest issue. I think when you look at Dimitri. From the um the as soon as the bell rang into that fight to the very last second of the fight, he was in charge. He knew that Canelo couldn't get in his head. You couldn't play the mind games with him. You couldn't do all these different things, all these different mind tricks that Canelo does to these fighters. It wasn't effective to Dimitri. He already knew he had the task at hand. He literally, if you think about it, didn't have pressure at all because Canelo was the one who's moving up in weight class to go fight him. And in this case, the the um the public already had him losing. You know, and it wasn't like he, he was in a situation where it was a win-win because if he wins, um, you know, as he did, you know, he, it's, a, it's an upset. He's, he's praised for it. But if he lost, it was just like, oh, it's Canelo. So it's not, it doesn't um, hit him as hard as it's supposed to as if, like, Canelo. Canelo right now wasn't supposed to lose that fight. His, his confidence probably got shot after that fight. You know, I, I know they're going to ask for a rematch, but it just it goes, it'll go, it all goes to show that anyone could lose at any time. But Canelo, as you stated, is not unbeatable. And I think now people are going to start looking at this fight that. as, dang, maybe I could follow the same game plan. And these fighters got to know that. You know, they have to know that this guy is not unbeatable. You can't mm -hmm. be like Caleb Plant in the middle of a daggone fight. And my skill's good. I'm pretty good. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I'm sad. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. no. Okay? He, mm -hmm. Man up, my brother. You in a war. You asking <laughs> the other opponent how my skills are. Now, nah, pack him up. He didn't believe that he could have won that fight. He was shocked at his own performance. Okay, mm -hmm. that's just what it was. But I never liked Canelo having fights made before his current opponent. I think that's the ultimate side or sign of disrespect. To have a Gennady Golovkin fight ready agreed to on September and then talks of you moving up to fight Usyk, that's disrespectful. That's mm -hmm. not showing Bevo the type of respect that he should have showed him. And I think... He may learn to respect him now that plans are foiled. And now he has to decide whether or not to move on to fight Gennady Golovkin or mm -hmm. try to take that rematch, which we all know, you know, sometimes the biggest downfall to men to get philosophical is pride. Pride literally is the biggest downfall of a lot of men. A lot of men have died in or under the ground, six feet mm -hmm. under because of pride. I think that Mexican pride is going to say, you know what, Canelo, go ahead. You know, you're the, you're the biggest guy in the world. Go ahead and get that rematch and, and go for it. You know, it is what it is. I want to move on to the scorecards here and this whole blasphemy when it comes to the judges' scorecards. So name these three meat clowns here. Tim Cheatham, Dave Moretti, and Steve Weisfeld. Yeah. All three judges had the same score, 115 to 113, seven rounds to five. What's notable is that all judges had Canelo up 4-0, which implies to me, because I watched the fight clearly, and, you know, I think it's kind of disrespectful, not only to Bevo or his fans, but myself and a lot of people watching the fight, because that's basically saying that my eyesight is not good and I need to go to the doctor tomorrow and get checked out. You know what I'm saying? That's basically what it implies to me. You know, that that's what they're trying to tell me. Like, I didn't see what I just saw. Yep. Listen, don't play me as a fool. I know what I saw. I gave Canelo one round out of those first four rounds. Mm -hmm. And that was at the generous of my heart. 
because I saw him, <laughs> you know, um, trying to do something. So I gave him that one round. Yeah. I don't know how the hell these judges had him up 4-0, but that implies to me that the fix was already in before the fight, and Bevo started this fight down 4-0 before the fight even started, before the bell even rang. And that, these are the politics of boxing. And I remember me and my dad watching the fight, and we looked at each other. We was like, listen, if they give this fight, clear as day that Bevo won it, if they give this fight to Canelo, Mm -hmm. call me out on the sport of boxing i cannot you know support something like this correct and i agree my my boxing career uh, as a as an analyst or commentator or just a fan in general was on the line when they took so long first of all to get the score course together it, that was a long process in itself my boxing career as a fan analyst whatever was on the line but neither less they got it right but i think it was because the masses knew what they saw and I know what I saw, which was a victory, a dominant victory by Dimitri Bivo. I still think the fight was too close. I think I think the judges put it too close. 15-13? I thought it was way I thought uh Dimitri won way way more than that. I I, I kind of had to score a card a little bit more than uh than the judges had. I I don't, I don't see how they could do 115-113. That means it's only two rounds that you could really say, yeah, well Canelo lost these for sure, but there's only two rounds. Like I need I I think I need a more definitive uh, fight. I think Dimitri arguably you could arguably say Dimitri won like ten out of those rounds. <laughs> like it's 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 crazy how how much he dominated in that fight. And the fact that to, he only won by two rounds, like ah, that's kind of disrespectful. It kind of says that Canelo was in the fight when he really wasn't. Like after the sixth round, he was gassed. The, the guy was out of there essentially, and he wasn't doing much to make the case that he should be in that ring. So I don't know. Listen, I gave him. Three rounds, the entire fight. Correct. That's the amount I give him. You know, Correct. three rounds. And that's just what it is. But it, it just shows you that when you're fighting Canelo, your biggest fight is not only Canelo, but it's the judges. Mm -hmm. And we saw that Mayweather fight where Canelo dominated, or should I say Mayweather, excuse me, dominated Canelo. Mm -hmm. Canelo arguably did not win a single round in that fight, but yet somehow that fight was a draw. When you go to Triple G, Triple G was a guy walking Canelo down in the first fight. I thought Triple G won that fight. They gave it to Canelo. Andy Lawler, you know, a lot of people thought he won the fight against Canelo. I did as well. They gave it to Canelo. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if this guy's going to out back with these judges before the fight. I don't know what it is. And paying for them to get anything they want on the menu. Here, take it. Take it. Have it all. And then they go in and they have these fixed scorecards. But something needs to be done. Because one thing about myself, and I apply this to my life, is that I'm a person that stands on morals and integrity. And I'm not going to support or continue to keep supporting anything that goes beyond or below those guidelines of integrity. You know, um, I'm just willing to sacrifice that, okay? So um, if boxers don't get their act together with these judges, and I see more robberies, then um, yeah, your boy's out. Count me out. But <laughs> hopefully... They get it right because um, Bevo was the bigger fighter tonight, and he was the best fighter in that fight against Canelo Alvarez. And um, he showed that. Listen, at the end of the day, pride will get you hurt. Stay in your lane. Let's see if Canelo comes back to earth and fight some of these hungry dogs that's out mm -hmm. here in the same weight class. No, I agree. That's my take. Is that you got any last words? Hey man, I think uh, right now Canelo should look at Charlo and Benavidez now for sure. They probably go look at him like, you know, now whatever, because you took your lowest. Now you have to get humbled again. But I think now is a great time to look at those fights. I know he wants to fight Bevo again, but I just don't. Right now, you should be at your weight class anyway. Dominate the weight class like you stay. You said you was going to fight Andre, fight Charlo, fight Benavidez, get those guys under the fun under your belt. Because right now it looks bad that you went up in weight class, you losing. You know, and then it doesn't it doesn't look good at all. So go back down, fight in your weight class, and you know make some great fights. Because it's not like you're not fighting great fighters. You're just choosing not to fight them for whatever reason. And Canelo, to put the icing on the cake, my brother, you did not win this fight. Okay, for your information, you can even text Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure you have his number, or you know somebody, or have a connect that has Stevie Wonder's number. Let him tell you, you didn't win the fight. Good night. Mm -hmm. I'm out. Like and subscribe. Feel the vibe. Y'all know the usual. It's your boy, Jalil, and I ain't delusional. I'm out. Peace. The Can You Dig It Sports Radio Network is here.
revolutionize the game of media. Be a day of dick. Tired of watching in the huddle over and over again. So like and subscribe to the channel and receive these new notifications of new uploaded content that will be coming your way. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm out. Peace.